So I was tasked by um, our program committee to provide concluding or conclusion remarks. And to say, to be honest, I'm not sure if I have something to conclude as I have more questions to ask for us and uh, for myself and my own work. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the 15 minutes of glory I have. Uh, that was a joke, so <laughs> thank you. I'm going to reflect on the themes that I'm seeing across the th uh, sessions and to show you some of the stuff that um, I've been doing with my students um, and to connect, try to connect the different dots. So first of all, about projection. As a good teacher, I went back to my office to bring some artifacts. In 58, March 24th, 1958, the Life magazine that I think doesn't exist anymore um, did a huge projection project on Russia versus US. And I just want to show you, and I circulate it around you, just to give you how in the good days we used to do projection. So here we have school boys point up a US weakness. And the whole story is about comparing Alexei Kutsov of Moscow with Stefan Lipkes of Chicago. And you can see not only how Alexei and Stefan are doing in school, but you can see wonderfully about the extracurricular activities um, that I found the picture to be hysterical. So while Stefan was learning how to make connections with the other sex, um, very heteronormative, um, our student in Russia is studying in the library doing science exercises and stuff like that. So I thought yeah, you'll get a kick on projection. So here is about the uh, student and here is about the teacher perspective. Enjoy. Nancy asked me, why the hell do I have it? And the story is that in, uh, when I was doing my dissertation research, I was really interested in how the media is looking on different assessment. So I went back to the 60s um, to try and look on whether international assessment was even in the media. So 58 was one point that there was some kind of uh, international research. And I didn't find it in New York Times. I found maybe in 67 a little bit in New York Times and in the British media then. Back then, my partner was really interested in uh, flea marketing. So we had a lot of chance to go over Life magazines and other magazines. So that's how I found those one. So have fun with that. I think one of the questions that uh, we started this seminar is convergence of what? And there is a question about, uh, there was you know, the old style that we have. I love you all, but we have this tendency of having uh, world culture versus the rest debate again and again. It's wonderful. And I think uh, that this time we learned about different types of convergence. So there is the convergence of participating in uh, international large scale assessment. And there is many work that has been done there. We have the Kemens and McKinley piece in CER. And we have other scholars, including myself, that are trying to uh, explain why countries participate. But I think there are other levels of convergence that sometimes we overlook. And one of them was hinted by Dirk yesterday in his historical narrative of the IEA. The IEA started in a very broad perspective of what counts as comparative studies. They did qualitative work, they did uh, literacy, they did literacy not only in how people can answer in a bubble sheet what's right and wrong, but they recorded students about their performance in uh, French and uh, English as second language. They did a lot of creative analysis looking on classroom observation. They had a huge project on the classroom project. And over the years, we see convergence on less and less these big qualitative studies that Colette Chabot in her piece in 2004 called, the, there was a range of studies. And over time, we see convergence on very simple and not really useful, as we learned from Dirk, assessments that are looking on what students think, what students do, and what teachers think and do as well. So that's one of the convergence that we are seeing less sophisticated on the research question that they're asking and just collecting very fast and sometimes dirty data that can be used, projected on and stuff like that. So that's one level of projection. A second le level of projection that I think came today in your talk, Florian, is about how people even use, uh, not, not uh, another level of projection, another level of convergence, is how people use international assessment to make argument across countries. And here, Gita provided us with a typology, I think it was in the mid-2000, right? Uh-huh. Um, on 
scandalization, indifference, indifference uh, glorification, and I think that was it. And indifference. And indifference. And now we see that in different countries we have these um, tendencies to use these kind of uh, ideas and to project on international large-scale assessment, project different themes, uh, similar themes, and project into similar countries. But we also see that in different countries we have convergence around which actors are participating. So we see more and more community-based organizations and NGOs that are trying to make a, uh, an argument. We see ministries of education converging around which uh, assessment to participate and how to make sense of it. We see convergence around which actors that are not Minister of Education, Ministry of Finance Planning or Secretary of the Treasury in the US, and we see this kind of project, uh, convergence. We also see interesting part of who is participating in teams, who is representing the country. And that's where I had this, some kind of a discussion with the IEA deal yesterday, that it used to be much more diverse. There used to be scholars like Benjamin Bloom was involved in the first study. And Benjamin Bloom was a big educational scholar. He wasn't psychometricians. And now we have more and more people that, yes, they are researchers because they have PhD. But they are representing or asking very specific policy questions that are not new research questions. And that was my comment to Dirk yesterday. So we have these different levels of convergence, um, not only in terms of who uh, participation, but who is engaged in the process. Another theme that came across our discussion is that we need to include more actors in our analysis. And we need to think about them in actor network. And not necessarily STS perspective of actor network, but in general network analysis will be useful. So we see, as I said, we see government checked. We have international organization checked. But now it's about time the media actors, different types of media, those with political leaning to the left or to the right, and that's where I can, uh, I'm sure uh, Florian's paper will show us something about that. Nancy's paper is doing that. Um, we see other actors. Aaron mentioned the social movement and community-based organizations. And that could be on the national level and it could be on the transnational level. So I see one of the themes is really adding more and more actors. Our discussion about world culture versus the rest uh, lead me to think that maybe we need to change our discussion about that and move and adopt maybe uh, a little bit more sophisticated discussion. And that will be around um, the, this model of, this is coming from uh, AJS in 2007, and we are talking about the recursivity of policy making. In CR, we just had a piece a few months ago using this kind of uh, framework, and the idea that it's not necessarily a top-down process, but it's actually a recursive process where <coughs> Global normmaking here, it's about the law, but they are using it to uh, talk about external ex ex actors and processes. It could be in the international level. And then when it's hit the national level, we see that in the national level, we have recursive process of who is using it, justifying it, challenging it, and pushing for even more participation if we are talking about international assessment, or how to make sense of it. So I would suggest maybe that's another perspective that we need to start engaging. So it's not really about whether world culture is right or wrong, and whether the critique is right or wrong. It's something is working together that actually can start explaining the puzzles that Chiki showed us on, uh, it was yesterday, for me it was like, it looked like Monday, but it was only yesterday morning. And that it could be that the reason that we see this parallel growth is because so many actors are playing with it and doing it at once, that that might lead to this um, relationship. So this is about this one. What is this? So this is uh, a piece from AJS, I think it's Carter's, uh, and of course I'm forgetting the second guy. Um, two lawyers, one of them is a lawyer, one of them is for Northwestern, making the argument that the way uh, bankruptcy law was constructed in three Asian countries, Indonesia, China, and another one, is actually not a top-down process. That, uh, that's what the usual suspect will be. It's actually a recursive process that brings together not only international organization and the state, but sub-actors in the state, like lawmaking, the implementers, like the actors that are on the ground, lawyers. In our case, it could be media, teachers, etc., and then some other mechanisms and how the law is even practiced. So this is about legal studies. I think there is an opportunity for us to bring it to education. And especially if we want to elaborate the 
type of actors that are engaged in this issue. And I think it will help us in comparative ed to really move away from this discussion that we have been having for 10 years about global versus local and to start thinking maybe it's not either or, it's actually both of them and it's very complicated. So that's one way that I'm suggesting. I was thinking a lot about uh, Florian and Gita's comment about projection and I think we might want to problematize it a little bit and think about it. I like tables. I'm a table person. So I'm thinking that it really depends on the PISA score in our country. Let's say I'm a country X. A country X, so we might have people that other countries that are doing more than us, significantly more than us, or ranked higher than us. We can have countries that are same as us, and we have countries that are less than us. And we can choose for different reasons how to treat them. And that's where I'm combining the technical aspect that I think Sam was commenting in his talk about the technical aspect with the constructing, the constructive aspect that Florian and Gita are talking about. There is, could be positive projection, there could be negative projection, there is a neutral projection, which is a category when you can mention a country but you can't, you're not using it to make any kind of an argument. And then it can be no projection, the ignoring. That would be the indifference. So I'm suggesting just maybe the indifference should be split a little bit into two different categories. I want to show you a case how in the Israeli media, a countries that are doing same or less have been used to scandalize the country. Okay? So here is what the Israeli media, Aretz, which is a quality newspaper. Uh, let's compare it, well, let's say, to the New York Times in the US context. We are ranked below all the Western countries and below additional countries such as Malaysia, Thailand, and Romania, who provide us still though apparently not forever, with cheap textile and labor. So here is the idea, is to use countries that are doing, uh, that are lower than us in some measure, okay? And they're doing like us in assessment. They're not significantly different than the Israeli uh, score, but they are being used to scandalize and shame the system in a way to motivate some action. So I, I think that this quote will come uh, as countries that are here, but we can use them to do negative projection about, we can use them to make negative um, projection about our own case. So that's where I, th I think it will be useful to start thinking about how these combinations of the technicality and the projection style can work together. And we can maybe learn on which of the combinations, that apropos your policy recommendation, which of the combination will lead in the end to some kind of a policy adoption later on. Um, media, I want to plug one more thing about my work on the media. I think the media is interesting because the media is changing in how they are looking on uh, assessment. So Florian's work and Nancy's work uh, is really interesting because they are looking on one decade of data. Right, Florian? Is that one decade? Yes, one decade. Okay. So uh, other work, previous work like Takayama and others, which is really rich, looking on one moment. And when you look on one decade, you can see actually more of processes happening. So for example, here in the Israeli case, we see that in the beginning there is really low mentions and there are peaks in the gray bars when there is a release of a report. And later on, these peaks are still happening even in white uh, cases when there is no release because the PISA reports or the TIMS reports are being integrated into the discourse regardless of the release of, news or of new reports. And that's what I think it's interesting to see on the power of these reports coming into the discourse and people just use them anytime they need to say something bigger than their argument. Okay. So annual publications like education that, that Yeah, that trigger that. Yeah. Right, so I, I looked at that. I looked at this, uh, if it's related to, if they are citing or mentioning education glass, and I didn't find that. But I did find on the Israeli case, and I still need to check it in, with more years to come, is that when we have a right-wing Ministry of Education, there are much more press release, significantly more press release using Teams and PISA than when you have a center left. So there is something about the, who is the identity of the actors, going back to the questions that we had earlier. But that, that would also, what, what you just said about like the reports getting integrated and beginning being triggered, that would also fit with the, with the German deck. I would have to have mm -hmm, yeah. look, but that's a very good point there. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I'm sure that um, Given the time you had, you can't give us everything. So I'm really looking forward to read the whole paper and to cite it for my own um, work. Media is uh, 
not only what the text, there is the pictures, and we saw it in your case really nicely about a, a group of students hanging out in the gym. I just want to show you manipulation of data. Manipulation of data is uh, one of the uh, elements they're using to scandalize the story even more. Here is the report from 1998. It's our popular uh, newspaper, equivalent to USA Today. Okay? And here you see a ranking of countries by achievement in science, wonderful teams, and you have 1 to 20, Israel is number 17. Oh my God, Israel is really be, uh, below. We are going really to lose anything that we have. And the narrative in Israel is that the only resource we have is human resource. That's a, a narrative for 50 years. So when you look at that, and you are just looking at the image, you get the sense that, wow, Israel is doing really, really bad. The only manipulation here is that there is another half that is just missing. In Teams, we had 36 or 38 countries participating. And the newspaper just cut it on 20 to scandalize the story even more. So I think it's important to look on the text and the uh, uh, images that they're using. I have more examples, but I'll skip it. Um, I want to talk, my last point is really about thinking again about networks and uh, how countries are being referenced. And I want to share with you something really dirty and quick that we did in my class. We have a class here about international assessment and the students got the following, assess uh, the got the following assignment that was assessed. Uh, the assignment was go pick a country that uh, you can read the newspapers, find 10 articles that were released in December 2013, that's when we have the release of PISA 2012, and code them using a very structured coding sheet that I prepared for them, okay? So we had a student working on different countries, Singapore, Vietnam, US, Taiwan, Canada, Colombia, Australia, Indonesia, and China. And here you can see, for example, who is speaking in the different countries. So here is the blue is the government. So in Singapore, Vietnam, uh, US, you see uh, Taiwan, you see a lot of governmental speakers in the media. In other countries, not necessarily governmental speakers, it could be more OECD, or it could be academic professors. So the idea of projection and who is projecting could be highly related to the context we are talking about. So I would suggest going and do what you did and Nancy did and I did, do a comparative study of projection to really learn on the processes on the social level and the actual level. Chiki, you have a comment? No. Here is some questions about challenges for PISA. So we coded whether the article was challenging PISA or not. Again, this is not fully scientific, ready for CR piece. This is just a quick and dirty exercise we did in class. Um, so here you can see how in some countries there was challenges, very few articles that are challenging, and some other articles that were more challenging of uh, OECD PISA results. The last piece I want to show is this network analysis, and I'll, I'll jump to here. Here we have the different countries and whether they are co-mentioned together to create a story. Okay? And here you can see exactly the point that you are talking about, about how the Asian tigers, as they are called in some newspapers, are co-mentioned so many times together that they are creating this story about the Asian model of education. And other countries are mentioned once or twice, and sometimes by themselves, like Norway, was mentioned maybe once or twice together with other countries. So that's, I think, one, what that's again? Tom Hatch, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, it's, it could be Tom Hatch, only if he published it in a newspaper. It needs to be in a newspaper, yeah. We didn't do, Gita is right, we didn't go to the construction of nationalism and comparison in academic literature. That's uh, another project. But I think that's maybe one of the ways to go, to think about the projection as really an actual network processes, more of a social network process, and look on how it is done, who is doing that, what's the motivation. It's not enough to do only the media. That's a good start for us but maybe some interviews. We need to bring the media people into the room. And Mary, maybe when we have the convening about the media, we need to have some actors from the media, like we brought Dirk, right? Like an actor in uh, the international assessment. So, um, yeah, as I said, I have uh, more questions and suggestions than conclusion, but uh, I'll be more than happy to hear what people think.